All right, had a brother uh, let me know about this. Uh, some guy that was allowed to speak in Lawson's uh, church there is very dangerous. Uh, let me let me show you about this thing here. We're going to start 20 minutes and 42 seconds. This is about the Hurricane Harvey thing. Uh, this is very recent here. August 30th, 2017 is when it was published. And um, this, listen to this. This is, I don't know why on earth Lawson would have let this go. Is a chaplain, and he's a, a catastrophe chaplain. What was it you said? Disaster, Disaster chaplain. And uh, he... Uh, uh, he's been in this before, and he knows what's going on firsthand. And that's always good to have somebody like that who knows exactly what's happening. And he's going to come up here, and he's going to tell you what he does. Come on up here, brother, and tell the folks whatever the good Lord's laid on your heart. And um, we'll let him explain a lot of these things to you, because he can be a great help here. Okay, he said he's a disaster relief chaplain. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Well, actually, no, I'll, I'll just... Why don't we just do that right now? Disaster Relief Chaplaincy. Okay, I looked this up. What is this whole thing? North American Mission Board. Disaster Relief Chaplains are members of Southern Baptist Disaster Relief Teams. They are mobilized with their SBC State Convention Disaster Relief Team by the State Disaster Relief Coordinator. Southern Baptist Convention is just loaded with Freemasons. I mean, major, majorly free Masonic uh, people there. But you can read the thing here. I'm not going to read all this stuff. But it goes down into this, and this basic qualifications requirement for Southern Baptist Church endorsement. Complete the training involving Southern Baptist and Disaster Relief, about 12 hours. Complete the training Southern Baptist Disaster Relief Chaplain's Manual, about 9 hours. And this, is, this has to be military stuff here. Complete one unit of training in critical incident stress management. I mean, that's like textbook military terminology type of stuff there. I mean, I asked my wife about it. She's like, yeah, she's like, that's military type of thing there, you know, FEMA slash military, you know, stuff. But um, you get down through, but I thought it was interesting, military church planting. So I went there, this is the where it takes you, military church planting, and it talks about uh, one of the North American mission boards there that NAMS strategies for providing uh, spiritual support and resources to military communicate communities in partnership with local Southern Baptist churches and other kingdom partners is to plant a dynamic, growing SBC church. You know, it has to be dynamic. You know, where do you see this in the New Testament? You know, dynamic churches. <laughs> and um, to plant every, you know, church near every major United States military installation. These sites include approximately 275 in the United States and 150 overseas. And again, you know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, if you're in the military or something like that, I don't hate you. Just like I don't hate a Catholic or I don't hate a Muslim or whatever else. It's the system that I go against. Uh, the military in this country is basically the strong arm of the Vatican. They go out and they, they carry out the crusades against the Muslims and things like that, just like happened in the past. Catholic crusaders, you know, and I've seen more and more and more soldiers now are starting to wear the actual crusader cross, the white shield with the red cross in it. Um, I'm seeing it more and more, and there's even a guy that I've mentioned in uh, other studies. I'll uh, just do a search for him here. Yeah, Craig Solman Sawyer. This guy's a special ops guy, and um, just to show you what I'm talking about here, Tactical Insider uh, Training Info Products. I think this probably has the best picture of it. You know. Check out that shirt. You know, it's actually a Crusader's helmet. You know, there. Crusader's helmet with the cross behind it and the shield. So, yeah, that's the military is definitely in bed with the Vatican. So I find it interesting that this Southern Baptist Convention here, the Southern Baptist churches are saying we need to have dynamic, growing, you know, churches near every military installation. And again, you know, the danger of yoking, uh, you know, church and state. It's a very, very dangerous thing. Military ministry, the whole thing there. But another thing I did was I typed in a search for FEMA and this disaster relief chaplain service. And it came up with this FEMA.gov. I mean, this is their website. This is not some conspiracy thing or whatever else. FEMA.gov. Uh, big document here. We're not going to even go through all this thing. 
but it's just talking about how that uh, they go through the training and stuff like this, the chaplains and stuff, and, um, you know, uh, all these different things. Like I said, we're not, we're not going to go over it. It's a big thing here. Um, but I just want to show you who all's involved in this thing. You know, federal agency partners, Department of Health and Human Services, Department of Homeland Security, okay, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, so you got the Military Social, Social Security Administration, I thought that was kind of interesting, and the Postal Service, <laughs> you know, I thought that was like, hmm, and there's a lot I can say about all this, but you know, um, but check out some of these uh, voluntary agency partners. Here you have a map, American Baptist men. I'm like, okay. Uh, Red Cross, there's some issues there uh, with them joining up with, you know, the Catholics and stuff. My wife brought out a video about that years ago. Um, the whole Red Cross connection to the Jesuit order. Uh, the Brethren Disaster Ministries. Oh boy, look at that one. Catholic Charities USA. Catholic Charities are the ones that are one of the bigger culprits of the ones bringing Muslims into this country just bringing them in and, and things catholic charities so you got american baptist men working with catholic charities under fema christian disaster response christian reformed world relief committee churches of scientology church world service you know a lot of these i'm not sure about <laughs> disaster psychiatry outreach Okay, Episcopal, they're involved. Habitat for Humanity, I've heard a few things there. Um, international Aid, let's see here. Latter-day Saints Charities, Lutheran Disaster Response, Mennonite Disaster Services, and that's something. National Association of Jewish Chaplains. Uh, National Emergency Response Team, it sounds kind of military, but whatever Nazarene Noah's wish that sounds nice doesn't it points of light Institute sounds kind of odd Presbyterian Salvation Army Samaritan's purse Franklin Graham you know Billy Graham then his son Franklin Graham his organization remember this one okay Samaritan's purse uh, Society of Saint Vincent de Paul sounds Catholic again um, Southern Baptist Disaster Relief, that's where your Southern Baptist uh, Emergency or Disaster Relief Chaplaincy would come in. Um, Tzu Chi, whatever in the world that is. Uh, United Church of Christ, United Jewish Communities, United Methodist, United Way. There's some also some issues there. World, world Vision issues there too. But you know, you can read through this thing here. Uh, this FEMA thing but see what they're doing is they're using natural disasters to bring the for the continuity of church and state to bring these organizations together you know it's incredible actually there's a thing right here let me show you um governments in par partnership with non-governmental organizations such as faith-based or volunteer groups also provide shelters safe locations where survivors can find first aid, food, and a place to sleep. So governments in partnership with non-governmental organizations such as faith-based or volunteer groups provide safe locations. You mean like, a, I don't know, church buildings? There was this big, whole big, huge uproar because Joel Osteen wouldn't open his church at first to the victims of Hurricane Harvey. Down there, and then later, well, yeah, okay, we'll help the people and stuff like this. Churches being used in cooperation with the federal government. You're saying, oh, you're saying you shouldn't help people and stuff like this? No, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that these, uh, you know, yoking up to the government and things like that is very, very dangerous. Extremely dangerous. I've been warning about this for years and years and years. But let's just check this thing out here. There's Lawson. He just he's gonna walk down there and let this uh, disaster relief chaplain guy, who's tied into all this other stuff, come up and listen what he tells the people to do. How many have been into, how many have been into a, uh, a disaster? 
You have? Brother, come on up here, Kenneth, with me. You've been in one? They, they moved here from Texas, brother, yeah. from the very place that this is going on. Yeah. This, this is our home Where were you at? Uh, Indonesia, when the tsunami. Where? The tsunami. The tsunami in Indonesia. Tsunami. Yeah. Well, I was supposed to go over and pick up dead bodies, and I said I'm too old and I wasn't going to do that. Well, we did. But anyway, folks, these folks have been there. I'll tell you what. You're in, you're in a real good area. You think you're nothing wrong with you. You're good Christians. You're in church. You got tornadoes coming out now. That's a mile wide. You picture what a mile wide tornado would do coming down Broadway or coming into your subdivision. And then we come off of a different story. The bottom line when you're in a disaster area, you got all kinds of people. They will get in your face. You want to pray for them. You reach over and you grab their hands. Want to pray for them. I don't want to hear this stuff. That's right. You don't want to hear it. So you try to comfort them the best you can. And they don't listen to Jesus Christ. They don't want to hear you. A lot of them do. What you got in disasters, you got criminals. They'll loot. They'll shoot you. And they'll kill you. They don't have any respect for you. You got people will be coming from all over the United States going down there and it's help me. Please help me. They have nothing to do with this there. Nothing at all. But you have to deal with this in a Christian matter. You have a lot in that area, you will have in Louisiana, you'll have a lot of cotton mouths. They're very deadly. They're in your house. And when the water starts down, you're going to have to deal with them. They're bad. Am I right? They are bad. The alligators, too. Now. The alligators, we don't worry about. But <laughs> the cotton mouths, you will. But Joanna is a lovely wife. She's, a, she's also a minister in uh, Compton. Uh, his wife's a minister but that's not the bad part listen to what he says coming up here who you should send your money to we get called we're waiting on a call they call us we gone ain't that right hon should be ready but all I've got to say is folks pray pray for those people they need it they need your financial help but send your money to Franklin Graham the reason I said Franklin Graham, he would use the money like he says he would use it. He has chaplains, he has the resources, he has the paperwork. Okay. He just told people to send money to Franklin Graham. Now Lawson knows about Billy Graham. He knows about this whole scam of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, at least I think he does. You know, he knows about the New World Order and everything else, and he talks about that stuff from behind the pulpit. Uh, Lawson, what are you doing? Letting this guy stand up there and, and say, tell people to send their money to the Franklin Graham organization? And he goes on to say about, well, he has all the proper permits, and you need that. You can't just go help people. You have to have the proper paperwork, exactly like a government goon would talk about. You have to be in line with FEMA, you know? But I'm going to skip ahead here just so you can say, you know, somebody will say, well, you know, you don't know. Maybe maybe Pastor Lawson said something or whatever else. Well, we'll skip ahead here. Have you ever heard of the four horsemen? The four horsemen, I said in the beginning of last days, it's going to be perilous times. Read your Bible about the four horsemen. Thank you, brother. Yes. God bless you. All right. Give you first person perspective because they've been there that's quite a thing when you uh first thing i thought of when this thing hit uh, uh hit um, what was the place there in texas where and then he just goes on talking you can watch the thing make sure i'm not lying he goes on talking he doesn't warn he doesn't say uh, but i gotta just tell you don't don't uh, send your money to franklin graham oh uh, why would he allow that to go you know, unquestioned and, and whatever, unchallenged. But again, you see, 
This is the danger with church buildings, even supposed good ones. You have the federal government agents that can just walk right in there, and it's just like, we don't have a choice. We have to go along with the government. We have to do this and have to do that and things. I will never step foot in one of those buildings again. Okay? They are, they are federal institutions. I've said about that when they're 501c3. They are under the federal government, IRS code. They are governmental organizations. Don't even tell me that they're not. I've done the study. I've done the research. They are federal government institutions. So, just wanted to put a warning out there. Um, that is really, really, really bad. I mean, if he, even if Lawson is completely ignorant on who this guy is and on all the connections to FEMA and everything else there, even if he's completely ignorant on that, any preacher that's worth their salt is going to say, whoa, Franklin Graham? Whoa, no, those guys are connected to the Vatican. Bad stuff.